Well, welcome to the studio that COVID built. Today, I want to present to you a product that we purchased here a couple of months ago to really up our podcasting game. This is the Roadcaster uh, all-in-one podcasting solution. Uh, and it combines your mixing board, your recording, uh, and your headphone uh, distribution all into one simple, easy to use package. And we've been using it here for a couple of months now, um, produced several of our podcasts with it, uh, and got a pretty good feel for what it can do, maybe what it doesn't do, um, and, and want to give you kind of an overview of its features, what it might do for you, and more importantly, if you should buy one. All right, so here she is, the Rodecaster. And let's start by going over um, some of the basic features um, that you will find. Uh, if you're familiar at all with kind of contemporary soundboards, you'll recognize uh, the sliders um, that work just as you uh, would probably expect them to. Uh, they're conveniently uh, labeled across the top so you know um, which is which, which input you're controlling. Uh, and maybe we'll start around back. That might be the best way to do it. Uh, so you can see um, it has industry standard XLR input, which is fantastic because that means you can use um, really any mics you might have around. Uh, so if you already have a bunch of like SM58s uh, or things like that, um, you can use those. It, it does provide uh, phantom power um, to the XLR input. So you can use either uh, dynamic or uh, condenser microphones, whatever your preference is. We'll talk in a little bit why I chose this one. Um, but you have up to four um, of those and those are independently adjustable. Uh, you also have a, a standard eighth inch input that is labeled smartphone. Uh, so if you want to, this would be a great feature from either your smartphone or your tablet. Say you've got somebody on a Zoom call uh, that you want to bring in uh, to uh, participate in the other end of the conversation. You can't get them physically into the room, um, but if you have them coming in that way, either on the phone uh, or on through Zoom or whatever, um, I've had my iPad like up on a stand uh, and, and watched people uh, while they communicated with me. And so you can plug that right into there. Um, you have, because you have four XLRs, the assumption is you're gonna maybe have four people, up to four people in person, you have four separate uh, headphone outputs. Uh, these are uh, quarter inch outputs. Uh, so if you've got those professional quality mic headphones that take the quarter inch, um, that works. Otherwise you need to maybe think about getting uh, a couple of these handy quarter to eighth inch adapters that you can pick up for almost nothing uh, that lets you use a standard headphone input as well. But you can have up to four right here. Um, they do have a left, right, out that can go to some speakers if you want to. So if you want to monitor uh, the mix and what's going on on the speakers, um, you could do that. Uh, finally, there's the, the micro SD slot um, where you can record uh, your, your podcast and recordings onto. I think it's a little curious that they went with micro SD. I mean, they've got plenty of room um, back here. I, I'm not sure why they didn't just go ahead and use a full SD slot. That might be a little more convenient, but it is what it is. Uh, so there's a micro SD slot there. Um, and then finally, you have a USB-C uh, connection. And the USB-C connection does a couple of things. Uh, you will, this will show up um, as an audio device on your computer. So if you plug your computer into this through USB-C, um, it will show up as an audio device so that you can play um, recordings from, or whatever from your computer to this and you will hear it um, through uh, the Rodecaster. The other thing is that Rode provides software uh, that allows you uh, to do certain things with this with this box on your computer as well. You can pull recordings off of the SD card if you don't want to remove the SD card and want to pull recordings off that way, you can. Um, and it also lets you program um, some of the other features that we'll get to soon. Um, so that's that's for your computer. Here's your power, um, and then there's your power power button. Fairly straightforward. Let's turn it around. Um, there isn't uh, there is only one port on the front, and you'll see it right here. This is a eighth inch, so kind of a standard headphone adapter uh, port. And this is a duplicate of port number one. So port number one, headphone port number one on the back is the same uh, as this one right here. And the assumption is that if you're in the number one slot, you're probably the one controlling this and you may want to plug in up front rather than around back instead of having that cable um, kind of go over the top there. All right, let's get it booted up. 
So this is uh, this is a touchscreen, um, and what there are, and you can see you can it, it, the, the default screen is it's monitoring the levels um, of all of the various inputs of which there really isn't anything going on right now because there's nothing plugged into it. Um, and but if you also go and select your individual channels, you'll see that the screen uh, actually changes uh, to uh, allow you to do things. Uh, specific, make changes specific to that channel. Um, one of the nice things you can do is you can actually tell it, so channel one, uh, which is the ch main channel I use, you can tell it what microphone you have. Um, and then it will set itself up um, to work with that microphone. So uh, obviously it comes you know, ready to use uh, a lot of Rode microphones. So staying within the Rode family is obviously an advantage. Uh, but you can also tell it kind of generic condenser, generic, you know, kind of generic dynamic um, as well. Uh, if you're able to kind of stay within this family of products, then you know it's just pretty much plug and play. You can tell it what it is and away you go. Um, so we obviously have selected the Rode Procaster. Um, you can also do individual audio processing on each channel. There is so much uh, baked into this as far as the audio processing goes that you can basically do beforehand. You know, high pass filters and noise gates, um, you know, compressors uh, and, and, and this um, Aphex which was actually new to me, um, but uh, it lets you uh, also play with some uh, different enhancements that you can uh, do directly on that channel. And the nice thing it is per channel. So if you've got a couple of people who are your normal presenters, you can put them on channel one, channel two, set it up exactly how you want it for those people, and then never have to touch it again, uh, which is a pretty, pretty nice feature. Um, all right. So... For each of the four main channels, so those are the X, these correspond to one through four XLR inputs on the back. Uh, you've got your you know, kind of standard uh, you know, volume gain control right here. Um, you have whether you want to include this in the listening mix. So if you want to hear this in the mix you're hearing over the headphones, um, and then the ability to mute or unmute that channel. Uh, you know, if it's maybe one you're not using at the moment, you can mute it. Or you know, if you need to cough or something, you can you know, mute it for a second, whatever you're doing. Uh, so you've got those for the four uh, main XLR inputs. Then you've got one dedicated to the USB. So this is the USB input. This is what shows up as a audio device on your computer. Uh, so you can plug that in there independently um, control that. This one, these do not come with that, uh, the ability to, to set the uh, audio processing. Those are only on the XLRs um, when it comes to the USBs is just more controlling the volume of what it is. Um, here's the cell phone, which is really that eighth inch input in the back. And for this does have Bluetooth. So if you do want to um, connect it to a tablet or your phone or whatever through Bluetooth, uh, that, that is an option. And of course, it's, this, the Bluetooth is actually a button because that's what makes it uh, discoverable uh, when you're, uh, uh, so that you can do your syncing. Uh, and then finally, uh, as far as the audio input side goes, you have this slider that connects to these hot buttons here. Um, and, and these are pretty cool because what these let you do um, is they, uh, they, they come preloaded with some like sound effects or you know whatever uh, you might want um, on them, but the software lets you load your own custom files into here. So you can load um, MP3 files into each of one of these, and then you can kind of, and then they're at your disposal. So we have for our podcast, we have our standard intro here, uh, our standard outro here, um, and then a little bit of kind of like behind the scenes, you know, I'm saying something important, music, you know, whatever, uh, listed up on this one. And so I don't, things that I would normally have to do in editing, I don't have to do uh, because I can just embed them straight into the recording by playing them off of these. And and uh, you actually get two different banks of these. Um, so you can see, uh, yeah, pull that up. So this is our, become more as our podcast. So there's BM intro, BM outro, oops, um, the final music. Um, and then, you know, these are some of the ones that it came up with. And then if I want to, I can go there um, and I can program those banks as well. Um, so I can have up to 16 banks to give you these little, uh, you know, cards that you can write on and say this is what it is. Um, you get two of these, uh, so you can put those in and out. And again, you have to load those through uh, the computer program. So you have, to, you have to load the software onto your laptop, connect your laptop to this, and then you can load those up. Uh, but once you've got it loaded up, it's there. 
there's only 512 megs of internal storage uh, for this panel. Uh, so you're really looking at probably shorter stuff and you're looking at really wanting to load things like MP3 files and stuff that you know, isn't gonna take up a lot of time and you know, isn't gonna take up a lot of space. Uh, and then finally, you've got your headphone controls. So this is, uh, this is how you would, each person can set each of the four, remember those four headphone connections in the back for if you have up to four participants. Each participant can set their own level for how much they uh, want to hear uh, the headphone mix. Now, the headphone mix is shared. Uh, you can't decide to put oh, more of channel two uh, into channel four's mix and less of channel three into channel two's mix. You can't really do anything like that. Uh, the headphone mix is the headphone mix. You're either in the mix or you're not through this button right here. Um, but each person can set their volume how much they want to hear. I didn't realize what a difference it would make to be able to actually hear myself talk. Um, I thought actually it would be distracting, but I very quickly got used to it and very quickly uh, started to appreciate it, uh, being able to hear, hear myself talk as I record. Uh, and it's, it's really great to be able to hear the other person, uh, if you're doing like an interview style show or something, talk as well. Uh, it, it really helps. I, I honestly think it cuts down on the ums. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but, but it does. Uh, and then finally, if you have, um, you know, if you have uh, speakers hooked up and you're monitoring the mix through speakers, um, you you can do that as well. Say maybe you've got you know these four channels hooked up and they're you know you, you're controlling this, but the the people recording it are on microphones in another room. Uh, you don't want to mix through your headphones, but you want to you know mix through the speakers. You can now, of course, that is a standard you know quarter inch out. They could go to speakers. It could also go to headphones. It could go to anything you really wanted it to go. It could go to a second mixing board um, or a second recording recording unit uh, if you want to. Uh, the important thing to recognize is when you're adjusting these, these are just monitors, right? So this is just monitoring the recording as you are making it. So you can turn down you know, your headphone mix. You're not turning down or changing the recording in the actual, the actual recording uh, level. Uh, that you do through these sliders right here. Um, I found that like you know about this level here is is a really good comfortable level for me with this microphone and uh, you know but you still got a little more headroom uh, if you want it. All right, now I do want to talk a little bit um, about the microphone. We chose this uh, the Procaster uh, from Rode uh, one because as you saw it had that built-in uh, pre-configuration so we don't have to configure it it just sort of works um, and this is really Rode's best quality dynamic microphone uh, we're in a makeshift studio we're literally using mount, mount, uh, moving blankets for sound editing uh, it really just didn't make sense um, you know it, it we wanted a good quality microphone but a good condenser microphone we were would just pick up too much of the ambient noise in the room, uh, and we really didn't want that. Uh, so we went with the highest quality dynamic microphone. You know, you you, you pot it up there. I mean, I'm I'm right up in this. I'm talking right into it, um, and we've had very little. Even when the AC cooks on or something like that, you can. It's almost imperceptible in the background. We're getting a really high quality recording out of that. So those are the basic kind of features and, and everything uh, for the Rodecaster. It's, it's pretty straightforward, easy to use. Um, you know, once you kind of get it, um, it's like, oh, okay, like everything just kind of works uh, the way that you think it will. All right, I'm actually gonna go ahead and record uh, the conclusion of this video with uh, the Rodecaster itself. Uh, when you're ready to record, uh, you can see uh, I've got my microphone hooked up through my XLR. Uh, I can see I can monitor my level on number one there. Uh, looks and looking pretty good. Uh, and then there's a big, bright, beautiful record button. So it could be simple, you hit that button and now we're recording. Uh, so now you should be listening to me um, on the, the Rodecaster itself. So what do I think of this machine? I honestly think it's amazing. Uh, for the price point, uh, for what you get, the fact that it, it replaces so many other pieces of equipment that you would then have to have spread out. You'd have to have a soundboard connected, you know, through some cables to your recording device. And then, you know, maybe the output of the soundboard connected to a headphone distribution if you had that wanted to do more than just yourself. Uh, you know, and it just could come on awkward pretty quick. This is grab, this is go, this is easy to use. Um, and normally I'm not actually a fan of kind of the all-in-one products because you're sort of stuck, right? You're sort of stuck with uh, whatever it is they give you. Uh, and and if you want to add a feature, if you want like five ports instead of four, uh, you know, there's no real easy way to do that. But with this one, they've included so many of the things that you would normally need. In fact, it's more. I've never had four um, XLR connections in it. I've never had 
all the spots filled up. Um, you know, I'm only using three of the 16 pre-programmed things. Oh, that's another thing that you would have to have if you wanted to do that. You'd have to have a separate thing, like your phone hooked up, you know, if you wanted to play sound effects or whatever, or pre-recorded stuff, you know, all baked in. Uh, so for the price, I mean, there are decent soundboards that cost about what this costs. Um, and the plug and playness with the Rode microphones and the quality you get out of it, like out of the box, this thing's going to sound great. If you're into the kind of technology, if you're into like the audio mixing side and you want to get in there and mix your own audio and, and change, you know, the settings on your compressor and all this sort of stuff, you can do that. And, and frankly, it just works. So if you're like me, where you're kind of like an amateur at all of this and you know, just more interested than you are proficient, um, and you just want something that works, um, this is for you. Now, uh, a couple of notes on the editing side. What this is going to do uh, when it records, it's going to record to that mini SD slot card, and it can record in one of two ways. Either way, it's going to record on a WAV file. So that's what you're going to get out of it. You're going to open up that SD card, you're going to see a file folder that says Rode, um, and then you're going to see a bunch of uh, wave files in order, you know, road 001, road 002, um, basically in the order they were recorded. Um, and those, those wave files can be a couple of different forms. They can be a standard stereo mix. Uh, so it's one file, but it has two, uh, kind of channels in it, right? So you get the standard left, right channel mix. You can have that. Um, and if you're out of the box, that's what it's going to do. You can set this up to multi-track record, uh, which is a pretty cool feature. And what that's going to do is it's still going to give you one wave file, but it's going to give you one wave file with a track for each one of these, even the ones you're not using. Um, so it's going to give you a, a wave file. So if you bring it into a program uh, that knows how to deal with that, but you know, even like GarageBand or Audacity or any of those uh, cheap free uh, audio editors will know how to do it. Then what you're going to do is you're going to blow it up, and then you're going to see all these different tracks uh, laid out as different channels in that file, and then you can do true multi-track editing. So if you didn't, if one of the channels wasn't, you know, hot enough and you, you realize that after the fact you need to bump up the volume on it, you can do it on just that channel. Um, and, or, you know, if you want to take something out uh, of one of them, you can do that as well. Uh, you can't do both. You have to pick either you get the, you get kind of the main mix, which is the stereo mix of all of the channels combined, um, as it comes out of the, as it came out, um, or you can do the multi-track mix, uh, Either way, because these are uncompressed WAV files, they're going to be big files. You're going to need a pretty decent sized um, SD card in here, which is fine because SD cards are cheap. Uh, and especially if you do the multi-track one, because even if you're doing the multi-track and you're only using three tracks, right? You're using you, maybe another person, and maybe you've got, you know, a sound effects track in there too. You know, uh, you know it's still going to have you know, zero volume tracks for everything else. Uh, it's not going to drop those. So you're going to get a pretty big file out of it. Cause again, this is also uncompressed audio. Uh, but you know, it's, it's still manageable. It's not huge. It's not going to take a, a really beefy laptop to deal with it or anything like that. And once you mix it down into MP3s, you know, it's, it's going to be a pretty small file for your actual podcast. Uh, but that is a neat feature. And I wanted to make sure I mentioned it, that it does do the multi-track recording um, built in. If you want to straight to the SD card, uh, which is, which is a nice feature to have. And I suppose, I mean, if you got fancy with it, I mean, these are standard XLR inputs. So if you wanted to have like a DI box and, um, you know, and plug your, you know, guitar uh, into it and have a channel, like if your podcast is you may be playing music while you're doing it, you could do that. Um, or if you had a separate soundboard uh, for mixing, you know, instruments and something like that, you know, you could take the main out of your other soundboard and put it into one of these channel inputs uh, here as well uh, and, and record that, you know, again, multi-track it. You can do that and, and have it on its own track if you want to uh, as well. So it, it can go beyond its setup, obviously, for podcasting. But since at the end of the day, it is pretty much just generic XLRs, there's, you know, you got a little more flexibility there. Now, all right. Now, the eagle-eyed uh, among you may have noticed that while there are slider controls, there are no individual uh, gain controls, uh, the little twisty knobs you're used to seeing on top of the soundboards. And that's because this isn't really a soundboard. That's not its job. It's not what it does. You can set gain um, in the same way you can set EQ uh, through the touch menu system, uh, but you're not really going to do it on the fly. It's not really set up to do on the fly. It's set up to basically set it up, forget it, you know, get it the way you want it, and forget it. 
Um, and and so I think that's one of the pro the the pros of this system, and one of the, one of the big things that kind of makes it compelling is that it really is set up with everything you need, not a lot you don't. Um, this is probably more than we would ever use here. I can't imagine us having more than you know four people uh, in person uh, or uh, doing you know, uh, more that we couldn't already do. Now, because this is just an XRN, as we've talked about, you could have a second mixing board if that ends up being a thing. Uh, for chances are for us, it's not going to happen. And I, while I usually kind of avoid, you know, what Alton Brown calls unitaskers, um, this one at this price point, the ability to just kind of set it up, set it up the way you need it, leave it sit somewhere. Um, you know, you're only going to use it a couple of times a week. You don't have a bunch of money just sitting around, uh, you know, invested in a piece of equipment or several pieces of equipment. The problem with doing that with separate pieces of equipment, you're going to feel compelled to use it other places. Take it here. Take it there. Um, this, because it does its job and it does it really well, you're going to set it up and it's just going to be there. Same with like this microphone. You can spend thousands of dollars on a microphone uh, if you want to, uh, you know, or even just a thousand dollars on a microphone. Uh, that might sound a little bit better uh, than this one sounds, uh, but you're also going to be feel compelled to feel compelled to use it or you're going to be like, that's a lot of money just sitting there for something, you know, most podcasters are recording maybe once, twice a week. Uh, it's a lot of money just kind of sitting around. This is a very reasonably priced package. Um, it all seems very well made. This is kind of nice and chunky. It's got a nice heft to it. The microphone is nice and chunky. It's got a nice heft to it. You know, the cases are all well made. I mean, I really feel like this is going to be a product that you're going to have for a good long time. And it's just going to do its job. Uh, so if you really want to up your podcasting game uh, and move beyond maybe just like a simple microphone hooked up to your computer where, you know, a lot of folks start and, and get into something more sophisticated, this could take you a very long way uh, before you need to really think about doing anything more than this because uh, you can't even have you know if you've got like an engineer person you can have an engineer on this while your you know your talent um, is recording either in the same room or if you got the cabling set up maybe in the room next door um, so pretty sweet setup all contained ready to go so do I think you should buy it um, yeah I mean I, I think you know we we think it personally it does great it has great performance for what it does and um we have not found a fault with it yet. Um, and again, for the price, uh, for the investment, uh, you you really can't do better. There are other products now on the market by other manufacturers. Um, I haven't tested any of those. We, we bought into this one because it was just so well uh, reviewed by others. Um, and we can confirm all the good things uh, that people said about it. So if you're looking for, you know, something like this, you know, especially if you're a church or, you know, something like that that's kind of on a small budget, um, you know, even just getting one of these and a nice microphone or, you know, start with this. And if you've got, you know, some SM58s or some, some generic microphones running around, try those. Try those first. And if you get the quality you want, great. If you don't, maybe step up uh, to, you know, a nicer microphone or two uh, and then go from there. So for me, I would say from in most situations for what most of us are going to do, uh, you know, if you're not looking to get up into that highest level of professional world, um, having the built-in mixer, having the built-in effect, you know, the built-in, uh, you know, pre-programmed sounds that you just have, you know, having the, the headphone monitoring, you know, all set up, having it all in one box that can just sit somewhere and be ready for you when you're ready to rock. I don't think you can go wrong. So yes, I would say from us, for me, this one's a buy. All right. Well, thank you uh, for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>